Hey guys, I hope you are doing great. A few days ago I received a time-lapse from one of my time-lapse colleagues uh, from New Zealand, uh, Bevan Percival, and um, I remember discovering Bevan back in 2014, I think, uh, when I was just starting to do uh, serious time-lapse photography. He's doing amazing, amazing work in the yeah, New Zealand uh, outback nature. Incredible uh, day to night, uh, night to day time lapses and Milky Way night sky time lapses, which looks uh, really incredible. Yeah, so go check out uh, Bevan's work. So I thought that I would just take you on a small tutorial in After Effects uh, because uh, the time lapse that Bevan sent me has a lot of shakes in it and it has to be fixed. I offered Bevan to give it a try, so yeah, that's what I'm gonna try and do today. I thought that I would just uh, try and show you if I can make this time lapse look uh, reasonable to watch. Yeah, let's try and head into After Effects and see what we can do. All right, so here we have the the time lapse that uh, Bevan sent me. It's uh, quite a long time lapse. It's uh, going all the way from daylight into full night sky Milky Way. Like here, we have the Milky Way rising in the night sky really beautiful. So yeah, it's going all the way from sunset light into full night and uh, actually it's going into some sunrise light too. Yeah, really extraordinary light we have here. We're looking at a time lapse of um, maybe 14 or 16 hours of duration. And it's quite hard to get all your, your motion control gear and camera and equipment running for that long. You really need a lot of battery power to make all your equipment run properly for so many hours. So, so the problem is, is really around here when yeah the night sky starts to appear you can see some yeah there's some weird stuttering in the 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 image the the motion control rig has some sort of issues especially with the the panning motion uh, which has these weird stutters which uh, is not very pleasing to watch it's not optimal at all so yeah that's what i'm going to try and see if i can fix although it will probably come up at the cost of some cropping and stuff but we'll see what we can do it's about yeah five seconds of the time lapse which uh, which has this problem we're gonna try and see what we can do um, I hope that there is some object in the scene that I can track um, with a motion tracker and then and then hopefully stabilize it that way Okay, so I think I've found um, yeah, this little tip of the rock thing um, right here that I'm going to try and, and track since it is uh, visible uh, throughout, yeah, throughout the area where uh, the problem occurs. So I think I need to brighten up the image a little bit so I can see where I, where I put my tracker. So um, I'm going to just apply a small ad adjustment layer right here and then just draw a mask um, on the foreground and apply an exposure effect and drag the exposure up and then keyframe it yeah, throughout the scene because here it's getting a bit too bright so I'm just going to turn it down a little bit and have the keyframe enabled right here and at the end I probably have to turn it down a little bit oh, I think it's great so so I'm gonna just pre-compose all this so we can uh, apply, apply our tracker on a fresh composition with the brightening effect applied move all attributes to the new composition so here we have um, a fresh composition with the mask and exposure applied, as you can see. So I'm going to make my preview at the full resolution to have uh, the maximum detail to work with. I'm going to find my tracker over here. Stabilize motion. And I'm just going to go with the position tracker, at least uh, for a start. So, and yeah, find the spot. It's quite hard to see this um, this rock. I don't know. Maybe this one down here is better. Uh, oh, it's kind of disappearing right here because 
yeah, the illumination of the scene is um, is not illuminating the rock uh, on this part at least. So I think I'm gonna have to stick with this one. Perhaps brighten it up a little bit more. Um, so I'll have to head back to my main composition and find the exposure and try and brighten it up a little bit more so I can see what I'm doing. That looks a bit better. I'm just going to try and apply the tracker right here. It's, it's going to be pretty tricky, I think, but I think it's the best shot we have right now. Just going to make the tracker look for the luminance and, uh, and then make it stop tracking when confidence is below 95. So that way, if it's, if it's missing a lot, it will just stop the tracking. Yeah, this is not really going to work with this point, so I think I'm going to have to switch tracking point along the way. Um, because it's it's simply too tricky for the tracker to track this one. So I think I'm going to pick this point instead. It has a lot more contrast to it, so it's going to be much easier for the tracker to uh, properly track it. So there seems to be some yeah, issues with the tracking. Uh, it's kind of hard for the tracker to see what it actually has to track because the foreground right here is so dark. So I'm just going to correct it manually to track the tip of the, of the small rock right here. It's kind of hard to brighten up the scene uh, because it's only an mp4 file that I have. There's going to be a limited amount of data to work with, but we'll see if we can make it work anyway. So right now we're having a blurry frame, I see, uh, probably because the motion control rig has moved uh, while the camera was exposing. So we're probably going to have uh, quite a hard time to stabilize this properly because the frames are blurry. So it's tough to see uh, the exact point that I, that I need to track, but I'll just uh, eyeball it and yeah, do the best I can. I don't think it's, it's too many frames that are blurry. So I think it's going to be possible anyway. So we can really see some of the the jumps from the motion control rig is starting to show themselves now because there's there's a lot of gaps between each frame. So the tracker is going to have some some problems uh, to track this exact tip of the rock. Yeah, the the frame is just simply jumping too much. Yeah, it's really a lot of noise right here, right now, because I, I had to, to brighten the image up so much to, to actually see this, this rock on the, on the night part of the time lapse. But I, I can pretty confidently say that the tip of the rock is, is, is right around here anyway, so. I think it's getting just too difficult right now for the tracker to to actually see um, what's going on, so uh, I may need to switch my tracking point up to this rock right here. So I'm gonna choose another tracker and try and, and head on from this point. Maybe it will be better to simply to simply just turn down the, the exposure because it's getting so noisy and it's it's hard to, to even see what's going on. So now I think the time lapse is in, uh, is in complete uh, darkness. So the only light that we are seeing right now is the illumination from one of Bevan's lamps, I think, which is uh, illuminating the foreground. So. The tracking from now on is not going to be super difficult because this area is going to look pretty much the same uh, on, all the way until uh, the sunrise part. Okay, so I think the tracker has has completed. Um, 
So I'm just going to try and hit apply on both tracker one and tracker two. Okay, so here we have the, the preview of the tracking. Yeah, the sequence has kind of a jump right here because I switched I switched the tracking points along the way, and it's it's uh, it's moving the frame as you can see right here because the tracker tries to keep the tracking point in the same uh, position all the time. So, but what I can do is I can go to the beginning frame and uh, toggle the position uh, keyframe on, and then I can. Right before the, the jump happens, I can use Control, Shift, Alt, and H to center the frame. So we're having the same jump right here when the uh, the new tracking point is is kicking in. So we'll just center the frame again. Yeah, it's still it's still kind of shaky. Let's see keyframe interpolation, and let's just set that to linear. Keyframe interpolation linear. And let's center the, the final frame. There's, there's happening quite a lot of, of cropping right here. This was shot at some wide angle lens, probably a 14 millimeter or something. So there will be so much distortion on the edges. I will probably have to crop the image quite a lot. I'll have to reduce the comp size quite a bit, probably 4,800. Yeah, it's probably a bit too much. Let's say 5,000. Okay, so I think we'll have to pre-compose this, um, this layer. I can actually just go to the first composition with the adjustment layer and just turn that off. We don't need that anymore um, because now we have made the, the tracking. Let's pre-compose this one more time. The first frame and divide the sequence. The last frame and divide. So I'm just going to apply Warp Stabilizer and see if it will be able to smooth it out a little bit more. Okay, so the Warp Stabilizer has uh, been running through. As far as I can see, it looks uh, quite a lot better right now compared to when no stabilization was applied. Of course, you can still see blurry frames up here because yeah, you can see the, the stars are getting kind of blurred out and that is probably impossible to get rid of. So that is something that we will have to live with, I guess. The motion, as far as, far as I can see, is, is a lot better. It's not perfect, since you can still see some, some slight warping uh, down here, and also a little bit up here. Yeah, right there. So since I've um, only applied warp stabilizer on the uh, middle part right here, I'm going to have to scale up the the clips on on each side because warp stabilizer will always crop crop in the image a little bit but i can see right here that the scaling that after effects has performed is 103.1 percent so technically i should just be able to type in 103 times one the framing should be more or less flawlessly blending with uh, with the other clip. I'm not doing that. Just have to adjust the position just slightly. And one of three point one of three point one. So I think I'm just gonna run um, warp stabilizer one more time on. A slightly larger portion of the of the of the sequence. Um, so what I just did, I was just uh, pre-composed all the layers one more time, and uh, I'm just going to split it up right here. So it's going to be like a 15 second, yeah, portion of the clip right here. So I'm just going to apply warp stabilizer on this uh, one more time and let it run through. The warp stabilizer on the second run has uh, been running through. It's uh, looking a little bit better. The sequence is quite a lot more smooth right now. Um, right now, just scrubbing through, it looks it looks reasonable, I think. But of course, there's still this uh, small yeah, wobbles and warps um, just around this area down here, um, which is pretty hard to get rid of. And 
especially the area over here um, has a little bit of wobble but yeah it's it's not too much i think that, that actually it will be it will be useful um, maybe not in in full 4k resolution but on social media i think it's gonna look uh, just fine so i just need to to scale up the surrounding clips right here um, and i can see that the warp stabilizer did 101.9 in scale so yeah so the position just had to be aligned just a little bit so i'll just take the final one right here 101.9 and the position just has to be slightly adjusted i think that's i think that's good okay so yeah i think we are close to optimal result um, the conditions taking into consideration it's uh, it's quite a difficult clip to get 100 percent perfect because we have some blurry frames and when it's the night sky it's difficult to go to go in and replace uh, frames so the night sky is, is rotating all the time so you can't just pick the sharp frames and replace them with the blur ones it's it's simply impossible what i'm thinking is that this uh, time lapse will probably look better if it's played back at yeah two times or four times the, the normal speed that will probably hide a little bit of the imperfections that are still present in in um, in this time lapse so guys there you have it um, thank you for watching i'm just gonna put up the the processed finished uh, time lapse uh, next to the uh, the raw clip so you can uh, see the difference for yourself i think that uh, this semi advanced uh, stabilization workflow helped quite a bit in uh, making this clip uh, look a little bit more pleasing and i've spent like uh, one and a half hour on this process so yeah it's it's always worth it to go that little bit extra mile to make your time lapse footage look perfect yeah i hope you enjoyed this uh, little tutorial and that you you learned a little bit and then um, yeah until next time stay safe out there um, and i'll see you soon